I respect my government. I thought they had my back. Boy, did I screw up. I wished I would have never shut down. This is Savannah Hernandez for Action 7 News, standing outside of Big Daddy Zane's here in Odessa, Texas. Now, this is the bar where just yesterday that clip went viral on Twitter of the sheriff bringing an excessive show of force. He brought that big tank and held civilians at gunpoint solely for opening their local businesses back up. Now, we've been shut down here in Texas for about a month and a half, and of course, Private businesses and people all over America are constantly being told by our government, okay, we're going to be shut down for two weeks, and then it turned into two more weeks, and now it's been a month and a half. So people are really getting tired, and just like this sign behind me says, they want their jobs back. People want to get back to work. They want to start earning a living again. They want to be able to provide for their families. So local businesses all around Texas, here in Odessa and Dallas, have decided to do that very thing. They are pushing back against those lockdown orders for coronavirus and they're opening up again. But of course, that has led to an equally tough response from local governments like the clip we saw from Monday. So we're here at Big Daddy Zane's, but that's not where the protest started from. Now for this report, I want to take you guys through exactly what happened. So we're going to actually go back to the Anytime Fitness here in Odessa, Texas, where the protest first started off and hear from some of the attendees there on what really happened. Now I'm here with Jenny Cutch, she's a local business owner from Midland. Jenny, talk to us about what happened and why the protest started here. Um, just lay out what happened for us. Yes, ma'am. So there's several small businesses that are frustrated about not being allowed by the governor to operate our businesses and to pay our bills and to pay our employees and pursue our livelihoods. And so I opened up my business all the way um, about a week ago in Midland. And then when I started hearing about other business owners, gym owners, bar owners, salon owners that wanted to open up, but they were afraid of the consequences, um, then I decided that I was going to start supporting every one of them. And so I started talking to the owners here of Anytime Fitness, and they said they wanted to put together a four-year anniversary celebration and also kind of a freedom rally, you know, in a sense. And so we started over here, and the uh, bar owner, who also chose to open up on Monday, had invited the Second Amendment guys to come from Dallas, uh, Amarillo, all over the place, even some local guys. And they're the ones that you've seen standing, basically standing guard in front of Shelley Luther's salon in Dallas for over a week. Always a peaceful protest, never any problems. And so we invited them to come to the gym as well. They were welcome. We invited them because we knew they were going to be in the Odessa area. Um, mostly it was a response to the way I was treated by the fire marshal service um, the day prior. Um, they were kind of aggressive and threatening to try to come in and, and um, issue citations to all our members. What basis were they trying to issue these citations on? That they were, they were violating the executive order as well as me. So I guess that was their, their motivation for trying to issue citations. I feel like it was basically a threat or harassment of our, of our members. Um, I would have never considered such a thing as far as like, you know, with having armed people here for security or for, for, the, for the rally, but um, they, they were peaceful. Um, the cops come by, they saw it, they knew that they were acting in peace. There was no uh, taunting or harassment of any, anybody that came out. Um, so I can't imagine how they went from that to over there to being, you know, being, a, I don't want to say assault, they weren't assaulted, but they're, I mean, that, that amount of force to, for something that was completely, totally legitimate and peaceful. After showing their support for the Anytime Fitness that opened up here locally in Odessa, Texas, the protesters ultimately made their way over here to Big Daddy Zane's. The business owner, who we'll hear from shortly, invited them over to show their support for her local business opening up as well. But of course, that led to the confrontation that we saw with the local sheriff, which led to the arrest of eight. Luckily, we were able to get some exclusive interviews from those men who were arrested and the organizer who ultimately got them bailed out. We are here today at the sheriff's office because of the situation that went down uh, Monday when they rolled up on us with the APC claiming that we're here to cause violence and everything like that. And um, we wanted to come out after we got all of our boys taken care of, of course. We wanted to have this protest in front of the sheriff's office with no guns just to prove a point that we are here to get the message out that Americans need to get up, they need to get back to work and really practice the, their First Amendment. So talk to us a little bit about Monday. Obviously, you guys are here in response to that. What happened on that day? Why did the sheriff bring out a tank? 
Uh, he he brought out a tank because uh, he heard that we were coming to town to help a business open up illegally, you know, in violation of Abbott's executive order. And, um, you know, we went through all of the necessary steps to do it legally. We were off bar property and everything. And, uh, you know, I think y'all are going to come to the bar, aren't y'all? And uh, we will actually show you where we were standing. You can see. Um Anyways, he rolled up on us, guns drawn, APC, uh, yelling at us over a loudspeaker to get back, put your hands up and everything. And uh, I really believe that he did that to get us to, uh, to pull the trigger. He wanted, to, uh, he wanted not only a good chance to, you know, massacre a freedom movement and end it, but he wanted to make us look like armed thugs. And that's not what we're here for. We are simply here to enable the American people to get back to work, to empower them and show them, you know, through the use of, you know, our Second Amendment and having weapons that will defend us if we need to use them, that they have the power to also get up, open their business and not be intimidated by law enforcement. And Philip, I do want to talk to you about another really big story that's going on here in Texas, and that's Shelly Luther in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Your guys were some of the ones who were protecting her salon when she decided to reopen as well against yes, those orders for lockdown. Talk to us about what it was like being up there in Dallas and what you think about Shelly being sentenced to seven days in jail. Well, we think that's wrong, but unfortunately, because that's uh, a court, a court, a court ruling. The best thing that we can do for Shelly right now is to keep pushing this movement and get all of these executive orders, you know, repealed. Because that is the only way that Shelly's going to get these charges dropped is if we keep pushing forward and America keeps pushing forward. So will you and your boys be back in Dallas then? Well, no, we're going to keep going around the state and get everybody to open back up and spread our message. And uh, that is the best thing for Shelly right now. It's the best thing for everybody here who owns a business right now. It's just to see other Americans open up. We get probably anywhere between five and 10 businesses contacting us a day asking to come support them. So we just spoke to Philip Archibald, the man who organized the bail and ultimate release of the men who were arrested on Monday. And now it's time for us to hear their side of the story on what happened. The police said that they were charged with unlawful carry, but let's find out their side. We all. You know, have have a responsibility for this country and to protect our constitution, and that's where we're at today. And uh, you know, we use our Second Amendment right to defend our first. But you know, that's just more. It's more of just a demonstration to show that we're not afraid to you know stand up for ourselves. But you know, we're not going to directly just go and attack somebody. That's not that's not our ideal. I mean, that's not what we're trying to do. So you know, as far as that goes, that's kind of where I'm at, and that's why I was there was just to you know demonstrate peacefully that this is what we can do. And uh, it was showed the force of violence from the state and from the local sheriff. So, you know, that's just, you know, something that shows them on their part that they're ready to use violence no matter what you do, peaceful or non-peaceful. What led up to the show of force that ultimately happened on Monday? They honestly, they honestly never didn't even say we were under arrest, honestly. They just came up, put me in cuffs, and put me in a transport van. Miranda uh, rights, anything no like Miranda that? Rights, no Miranda rights, nothing. But, hey, what about phone calls? Um, I don't know about everyone else, but they blocked almost all of my phone calls out. Uh, um, you, I couldn't actually yeah. make calls out until probably two or three hours until or uh, before I was bailed out. So yeah. at that point, my bail had already been posted, and then I was able to call out. That's what everybody yeah. said. Several hours after I'd already been in jail, they had pulled me out to ask me a bunch of medical questions, and I, I I'm on some medication, and uh, they I, I couldn't remember the dosage or even all the brands of the medication I'm on. So they they allowed me to make one phone call back home to get the dosages amounts and everything but they told me before the call they said if you talk about anything other than your medication we're hanging up the call and so at the end of the call is when I told my fiance that you know hey I'll see a judge at 8 in the morning I'll have bond in and they hung up the call then so they gave you no reason for why they were arresting you and and are you do you guys know what you're being charged with right now or are you being charged third degree felony um, what was it again? Unlawful carrying. Unlawful carrying in a restricted area, which we weren't in a restricted area. We were on private property and public property. We weren't on the property of the bar. 
We are currently inside of Big Daddy's End with bar owner Gabrielle Ellison, who was also arrested alongside those men who you just watched. Gabrielle, walk us through what happened on Monday. Well, we uh, opened our doors. Uh, like I think I have absolute constitutional right to do. I opened my doors. It, it actually started earlier. I, these guys and I had gotten in contact with each other and they decided to come down and protect me. So all, all day long on Facebook I was writing, you know, these guys are coming, these guys are coming. So I decided that morning, because I knew that they would be armed, which I have absolutely no problem with, I decided that morning to call my sheriff's department out of respect for the sheriff's department and let them know, hey, this is what's going to go on. I couldn't get transferred to nobody. The dispatcher actually listened to what I had to say, which I probably knew her too. Um, and then, I guess when this started to pick up and things started going and the sheriff realized, well, this might be real, uh, they called me and asked me if they could come talk to me. He said, I'm two minutes away. So he comes over here and I, I explained to him everything that was going on and he's like, we will not mess with you at all, whatsoever, except for the guns. If the guns are on the TABC property, on the outside, which I thought was fine and I still think is fine, I, I think that they're wrong, uh, that they would arrest the men. So when the men showed up, I told them, I said, listen, guys, I don't think this is correct, but let's, let's go by what they say. My property from this door right here back 50 feet, which 50 foot would put us, wow, look at this port. 50 foot would put us approximately right here. About there. That's about 50 foot. And what's the port about 50 feet? Uh, because this now is my private property. You're now standing on my private property. I pay two separate taxes. It, uh, it's noted two separate ways. They were back there and we of course had people all in our bar. Uh, we didn't have anything going but for about, I don't know, 20 minutes and uh, all of a sudden a uh, sheriff walks through my door, busts through my door, uh, and came up there and asked me was I the owner, which they're very aware I'm the owner, I've, I've known them forever. And I said, yes I am. And he said, is your bar open? And I said, absolutely, at 100% capacity. He said, could you please put your hands behind your back? And I said, yes, sir. So I put my hands behind my back and of course was arrested. And so then one of my customers stood up. My customer's like, what are you doing? Why are you taking her to jail? Well, they put his hands behind his back and arrested him as well. Uh, he did not, no violence, no nothing, a question. So they arrested him. Um, I had absolutely no idea why I was arrested the whole time, including I don't know if they have to read you Miranda rights, but those were never read. If I dare come in here and open my business again, they will do the same thing to me again. Boy, did I screw up. I wished I would have never shut down. And Monday was your first day of reopening, correct? Uh, I believe that was my first day reopening. And they just came right in? Boy, and they just... came in on me hardcore. They came in on me like I was a... Uh, a terrorist from another country. Uh, they came in with me. I, I'm a 47 year old grandmother trying to pay her bills. I have a lot of daughters in Odessa. I got a lot of daughters because all my bartenders are my daughters. Even at other bars, they're my daughters. I love them. They came in and shut me down. If they will do this to a family grandmother business that has an immaculate record with TABC immaculate uh 25 years worth of business folks half my life shut me down you better take your country back well that was my interview with gabrielle ellison the owner of big daddy zanes here in odessa texas and like she just explained to us this is the tape that she put up to make sure that the men with the guns that were arrested on Monday were completely off premises, were actually on her own private property so that they were not breaking any laws. She talked to us about how she wanted to respect her government, respect her local sheriff. So she tried to do all of the precautions to make sure that what happened on Monday didn't happen. But as we've clearly seen, as
as with the rest of the nation, there's been a huge overreach of government with these coronavirus lockdowns, but the American people are getting tired and they're ready to stand up. People are ready to open their small businesses, pay their bills, and provide for their families again. And we're going to keep reporting to you from local cities like this and hearing from local citizens and actual Americans about how this lockdown is affecting them. So you can find all of those videos on band.video. Make sure to follow us there. This has been Savannah Hernandez for Action 7 News reporting to you from Odessa, Texas.